Hello everybody, my name is Michael, and in today's video what we're going to be doing is this right here. So if that looks exciting to you guys, please carry on and watch the video. Oh, and just one more thing before we go. Please consider like, commenting, and subscribing if you enjoy the video. But now with all that out of the way, let's carry on with the video. Okay, so since we have so many things to paint up, I'm going to be doing them in little small groups. But just to let you know that everything starts off with a Xenothal Highlight Prime, which is starting off with black and then going over top of it with a white spray. And so you can see here there's a lot of different types of things we're going to be painting up, but I'm just going to focus on the stone at the start and we'll move through the different categories as we go and as I use colours as we need them. So for all of our stone work, it's going to be pretty much all the same because we want to keep it nice and easy since we're sort of batch painting a whole lot all at once too. So starting off, we're going to use Castle Grey here to be painting up the first base layer of any stone that we have on all of these different items. So just remember that this is going to be over every single item. And then once we have that complete, we're now going to be moving on with uh, dry brushing. And we're going to be using stone wall grey to do this. And you can see it's just going to be nice, quick and easy. I'm not worrying too much about it. Just really giving it that nice, quick, rough dry brush over top as well. Then once we have that complete, we're going to come in now with some dark sea grey, which is going to be another highlight we're placing on top. I'm going with a lot of uh, different types of greys and giving them a lot of uh, different types of highlights so we can get a big mixture of variety in our greys while we're doing this since there is a nice amount of uh, different level ray surfaces and little carvings in there so we're going to get a lot of different colors that are going to stay on here when we're dry brushing in all these different types and coming in now with our final dry brush I'm going to be using deck tan which is sort of like a off-white creamish color and that's going to be our final highlight so I'm doing this one the lightest out of all of our uh, highlighting dry brushing steps so just really on the absolute edges as much as I can to really bring those parts out so now with that all painted up we're going to come in now with a wash and I'm going to be using Nuln Oil for this just a nice simple black wash over all of our stone texture to really bring it out a sort of just neutral stone color I'm not going to worry about anything fancy here we need these to be uh, sort of just system agnostic here because we want them to just make it so they can fit into any situation we can and black wash is going to really help out with this it's also going to really help bring out those nice carvings as you can see in here as well and of course don't forget we're applying this to all the stone texture and everything that is stone on all the different pieces of terrain okay now we're moving on to another piece and as you can see here uh, this is just a tree stump with a few uh, bits of weapons and bags and stuff on here there's quite a few different types of these ones uh, but I'm going to be focusing just on the ground at the moment so I'm just using a nice sort of neutral brown and that's going to be leather brown for me it's not too dark it's not too light because like I said we want to have these fit into as many different environments as we possibly can and leather gray is going to be a nice starting off point and then once we've done that we're going to come in now with charred brown and this is going to be the base for our stump so there is a couple that have a few uh, wooden things uh, like stumps so all of them are going to be painted up the exact same way using the charred brown because again we want to use this to be as nice and simple and quick as possible basically what we're doing is batch painting and I do have a video on batch painting as well if you do want to see how I do batch painting so you can check that out too and then once we've done that we're going to come in with some mahogany brown and mahogany brown is going to be used for the handles or uh, poles and staffs anything like that that we have on our battlefield objectives here so as you can see we've got this nice stick here with uh, the end bit sort of like a torch on it so we're going to be doing that uh, in our mahogany brown uh, same with uh, w any weapon handles that we have um, just anything like that so it's either a wooden sort of handle uh, a brace a grip anything like that is we're going to be doing in the mahogany brown then once we're done that we're going to come back to this piece as you can see here I'm going to come with some rough iron now this one is basically just going to be used on this one piece here that's why I've just quickly singled it out and since these are pretty much just iron cannon balls the rough iron is going to be great for this purpose and we're just giving them a nice overall coat being very careful not to hit anything that we don't want it to hit and just making sure that it really does get into all those nooks and crannies there's a lot of uh, little balls on top of each other so there's going to be a lot of little gaps and then with that complete, we're going to come in now with our metal color. So we're just going to be using a basic gun metal here. 
and we're going to be applying it to all of our metal objects. So there is quite a few different ones uh, into all these battlefield objects. So I'm just showing you on the one that has the most on it. Um, so as you can see, we've got a bunch of swords, we've got shields. Uh, there's even a big axe in the back of this one. They've also got the banding around the crates we want to do in metal. So there's a lot of places they want to go through. And as I said, just nice simple coat over all of them in a batch painting style as I'm going down here. I'm just showing you the ones that have the most so you can uh, really get a feel for what I'm doing here. And while I did say to paint them all up in one sort of metal style, I'm going to add in just one other color in here. And that's going to be weapon bronze. I want to add in a little bit more visual color than just straight... Uh, plain metal silver on everything so mixing that up with a bit of weapon bronze is going to help catch the eye a little bit onto these pieces as well and i'm applying it where it's appropriate so as you can see on this nice shield here it's perfect for being bronze uh, i'm going to be doing just a little couple like florist designs like on the the guards of the handles even the little pommel there just doing little bits like that just picking out them over a whole bunch just to liven up the piece a little bit Okay, now with all that done, it's time for our last metallic, and that's going to be Greedy Gold. And that's just to be painting up all the nice little coins falling out of this chest here. And you can see there's quite a lot of them, so I've come in with a bit of a smaller brush, so I can pick them out. And you can see I'm sort of like dry brushing it here, just really trying to catch the tops um, and avoid hitting too much of the bottoms, and making it a lot easier to really get in between those little coins stacked on top of each other, which is a nice detail, and it's just going to be to make it nice and quick and easy to paint. Okay, so here we have a nice dragon egg hatching, and I'm coming in with some hemp rope. And what I'm going to be doing for this is I'm going to be painting the little nest that's around the bottom of uh, this egg here. And as you can see, the bottom layer below that is just painted up in stone, the exact same way that we painted it up in our step that we were doing all on the stone. And also with this uh, hemp rope, I'm also going to be splattering it around a few other places. So I'm going to be using it as sort of uh, carry pouches and... Um, sacks uh, just all different types of other things that we can use it for since it's a nice sort of neutral color and now we're going to come in with some orange brown and i'm just going to be using this for the little like uh pot slash jars that they have here full of bottles um for whatever various purpose you need to battle field objectives to be or just a nice bit of scatter terrain and it's just going to be a nice color to add in there a bit of orange is going to really help attract the eye and you can see it's nice and easy to paint, just getting in there with a small brush and making it as random as I possibly can. Okay, moving on to one of the bigger pieces of the miniature now. This is a man who's died on his horse, unfortunately, left out in battle. And I'm just going to be painting up the horse here. And I'm going to be making it a, a, a grey horse slash white horse. Um, but remember, this can be used any colour you want. I'm just using it from one of the colours that we've already used to cut down on time. Like I said, we're batch painting these, so... I'm trying to limit the amount of colors that I'm using in any uh, given time so I don't have to keep switching between colors all the time. I already have them on my palette, so why not use them? And using that same stonewall gray we just used to paint up our horse, we're also going to be just painting the uh, under part of her dress she's wearing here because, like I said, we're doing batch painting style. We want to make this as quick and as efficient as possible. So just this nice gray is going to be for her underskirt here. And then what we're going to be doing now is coming in with some cobalt skin. So, of course, we need our flesh color for our uh, people that we have here. Now, there is two people in this uh, battlefield objective set. There's the lady here who's tied up, and there's also the guy on the horse. So, again, doing them exactly the same batch painting style, which means we're just using the colors, uh, the same colors over again in different places, trying to make it easy on ourselves so we don't have to keep switching out colors constantly. Okay, coming back to our dragon's egg now, we're going to use some khaki, and that's going to be for the shell of our egg. So this is a nice egg color, I guess. <laughs> There's a lot of colors you could use here. Khaki's going to be a nice, uh, good overall coverage here. It's going to really help it stand out from the hemp rope and the stone that we've got on there as well. So that's why we're going with the khaki for this. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come in with some bright green to add a little bit more extra color to this piece. So I'm coming here to the one with our sort of food arrangement we've got here. And I'm going to be making it like it's got some green apples or pears in here. So that's why I've gone with this nice bright green. As well as that, I'm also going to be using uh, the bright green to do some of the clothing on this fallen guy on his horse here. So I'm going to be using it for his, uh, his top that he's wearing. 
just trying to keep those colors as i said nice and easy and consistent and while we're out here i'm going to grab some charred brown that we use from our, our painting our stumps and i'm going to be using it just to paint his hood because this guy sort of seems like he's a messenger especially since he's got those nice uh, scattered and torn like messages that he's uh, got all over the ground so i want to keep him as simple as i possibly can and again coming in here with the black gray which is going to be a nice dark color i'm going to be doing this on the uh, boots because we want to keep him sort of muted um very plain and basic because again he's not like a hero who's fallen he's just a sort of messenger guy and now we're coming back to our tied up lady and we're going to be using deep blue for her rest of her clothing that she's wearing here and i've gone with deep blue to uh make it so it's going to stand out somewhere on the table so she's far more eye-catching since she's a battlefield objective we want her to stand out from a lot of the natural colors we've been using so far um, we don't want to make her as much of a piece of terrain as everything else that we've painted so we need her to really stand out and blue is going to help with that make it a lot more eye-catching on the table as well and it's, that means she can also um, be a princess or a noble woman or something like that as well Okay, so onto one area that I haven't touched, and this is nice big fire that sits on top of our uh, burning brazier that we have for our warning signal. And this is going to be using a lot of bright colors, because of course we need fire to be bright colors. So starting off with a base color of yellow here, and just really going in and trying to cover as much as I can. Of course, no <laughs> notoriously yellow is a very hard coverage color, so it's going to take a few coats to do this, to try to get it... Um, a little bit more opaque and once you've done that while it's i've still got it just a little bit wet i haven't let it fully set in and dry and then i'll come in with an orange here and that's to go over top and to hopefully help it mix in a little bit i'm no master painter when it comes to mixing paints and making them blend perfectly i'm just trying to do as much as i can here and having the paint just a little bit wet is going to help with that stage a lot easier than if we wait for it to completely dry because we do want it to mix a little bit and make it look a little bit more like natural flame and then once we've covered enough orange as much as we have and we're happy with it and it's just starting to dry we're going to come in with a red and of course any red's going to do here i've just gone with my fist in red this is a nice deep deep red um deep red would probably help in the situation more than a light red because then you start worrying about it mixing too much and it gets a lot more pink um but this one i'm being a lot more concentrated the red i'm going mainly for the tips and the edges of the fire to make it look as natural as i possibly can and also while i've got the red and blue out i'm just going to be painting these shields here on this nice uh, pile of weapons that we've got as well to add in a lot more uh, color in there than just making it the plain metal colors and just while we're on there one of the stones that we got here is slightly different to all the rest and it's sort of like a way stone so i'm going to be adding in just a little dab of blue onto this to make it look more uh, magical in a sense you could use any color here even any of the colors we've used i didn't want to go too bright with it so i've just gone with this nice uh, gray blue color okay now that's all our terrain pieces all fully painted now it's time to move on to the washing step again nice easy wash over all of them so for all of our flesh of course nice and naturally we just want a plain flesh color so right clean flesh shade here will do and i'm going over all the flesh areas as well as all the uh sort of parchment and lighter colored uh, things here basically it'll just be any paper that we see in parchment lying around on any of the pieces that we've got here and then once we've got that we're time to move into our big washing step and that's 99 percent of the rest of the stuff we've got left and that's everything else that isn't metal uh, so everything else that isn't metal we give a nice brown wash and i'm just going to be using agrax earthshade for this giving it a nice good overall color and coverage making sure that we're not having it pull too much in places we don't want to the one place i don't really care too much if it pulls is the ground I, I don't mind if there's some like really dark brownish puddles anything like that it makes it look a little bit more interesting on the texture and then once we've done that what i'm going to be doing is coming in and doing the metal now so we're going to be going over with a nice known oil or black metal wash uh, to really help bring out all of that metal make it look a lot more lifelike so that's of course going around all the little bandings around the chest and any weapons that you see just on anything that you think is metallic in nature um, we're going to be painting in the known oil except for any bronze detail any bronze detail i'm going to be doing in reckon flesh shade just to add a little bit more interest okay coming on to a little dragon egg again here now and we're going to be using seraphim sepia for the the shell of our egg to give it that 
much more nicer look. And as you can see, I've painted them up as a little red dragon. You can use any of the colors that we use here. We've used blue, we've used green, uh, just any, any color you want for a little dragon. So we use red for the fire. So I just quickly went in and grabbed that dragon, uh, the nice red skin tone. And as you can see, the sepia wash is really helping out and making it look a lot more real egg light. And with that, we can start moving on to our highlighting stage. Now, this is basically just going back over with our original colors that we used in our uh, base coating step and then just placing them back on and uh, adding on to the areas that the sun would naturally hit or the light would naturally hit to make them look a lot more realistic. Now, I'm not being too fussy with this. I'm really just making it um, on this pieces that I want to have out eye-catching. I'm not going to highlight every little piece for terrain. I, I'm just going to pick out the things that are the most important to me and when you're seeing it on the table. With all that complete we have now finally finished painting up our battlefield objectives by mantic games and you can see just with some simple and quick batch painting techniques as well as limiting our color palette we've really been able to maximize the amount of miniatures we've been able to paint at one time here and really give it efficient use to a lot of those colors in different places so i hope this has been helpful for you guys whether you want to follow along or you just enjoy me painting up some cool miniatures and with all that said, guys, I'd like to thank you all for watching, and I can't wait to see you all in the next video.